Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us for today's Stay Creative. I'm Tara Curry, I'm the Senior Resource Specialist at the OPC, and I'm excited to bring you a quick crochet project, perfect for beginners. As you all are very aware, we're all wearing masks in public. I am in a safe setting today, so I don't have mine on, but they may tug at your ears a little bit. So we're gonna make some quick 15 to 20 minutes mask extenders today. And I'm excited that you're all joining me. I can't wait to see you all for the live. Okay. Today's project is a great stash buster. What we're gonna be using today is a pair of scissors. We're gonna be using needles. Now you can either use, depending on the size of your button, a tapestry needle, which we will use to weave in the ends of our project, or a smaller needle. You just wanna make sure that it fits through the buttonholes. I brought some fun buttons to use today, so you can do some fun patterns and really make it personable for the person that you're giving this to or yourself. I even thought it might be fun at the very end if you've got some old brooches or other beautiful little embellishments laying around that you can put it in the center, not just buttons for the ear holders. You're also gonna need some yarn. For today's project, I'm going to be using a worsted weight yarn. This is 100% cotton. I also have an acrylic available, but again, it's worsted weight, and so it'll have a number four on it. And then today I'm going to be using a size H hook. Just make sure to look at your yarn. What's nice about this project, it's very flexible. We're gonna be measuring throughout. So you'll need a measuring tape, and then of course your crochet hook. All right, so we're gonna get started. Again, this is a great project for beginner crocheters. So I've got some yarn and our first step is to make a slip knot. And we're gonna start by chaining six. This whole project is done in single crochet. So it's a one stitch project, which is nice. Five and six. And so here's a little secret about me. Some of you may have known that I've taught knitting classes before, and that is my forte. Crochet, I'm not as good at. So if you are a true crocheter out there, bear with me. Um, the first row for me is always the most finicky. So my secret is, is sometimes I go through just one loop on my first row and then go into the normal single crochet stitch from there. And that's what I'm gonna show you here. So I've got six stitches that I chained, and what we're gonna do is knit, or sorry, crochet into our second stitch from the hook. So if you look, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six Vs. Each of those is considered a stitch. We're going to skip that first one and single crochet just through the back loop of that stitch. Single crochet as you enter the hook, pull through once, you'll have two strands on your hook, yarn over again, and pull through both stitches. That's our first. Again, one, two, three, four. We're gonna go through the back stitch, pull up a loop, you'll have two on your hook, pull through two. And we'll continue that all the way across the first row. Go through, pull through a stitch, pull through two, go through, pull up a stitch, go through both. Again, first row looks a little fidgety but as you'll see as we go through the project, everything will even out. You can also stop and check your Vs. One, two, three, four, so we'll do our last. Go through, pull up a loop, pull through both, and now you've come to the end of your first row. Now with crochet and single crochet, you have to ladder up or step up to bring your yarn up to the next level for your row. To build up the ladder to your next row, what you're gonna do is one chain stitch. So you're gonna chain just one, turn your work over, 
And now you're going to continue to go and crochet, single crochet across your five. You're going to do this for 18 to 20 rows for the project. At the end of the project, you want your mask extender to be approximately five inches long. But I also encourage you to check your masks. Some of the paper masks, I call them, have shorter strands, so you might need to go a little bit longer, and that's what's so nice about this project, is that it's very forgiving, and it works up very quickly. Okay, so I just finished my 16th row. It brings me to 18 rows total. What's nice about this yarn, and again, check the yarn you're using. This is cotton, it has some stretch to it. This is an example of an acrylic, and it's much more stretchy. So as you start crocheting, depending on what yarn you're using, give it a little stretch. As I said, it's a very easy, adjustable project for any mask that you're using with the ear holders. I'm gonna do a measurement. Lay it flat. And look at that, right at five inches. So at this point, I know this works well for my masks and our next step is to weave the ends in. So I'm going to cut my tail of the yarn And I was taught to end a crochet project by pulling yarn over like you're going to chain and just pulling it through, giving it a little tug, and you're left with a little knot, but it's secure. There are other ways to finish crochet projects. Um, you might not wanna do a little knot if you're doing a sweater or something with a finer lace, but I think for this project, 
it's nice, it does the job. So at this point, you've got your little rectangle, you've got your two ends, and all I'm gonna do is use a tapestry needle, thread that through, and weave in my ends. I'm always worried about my knitting or crocheting becoming unraveled, so I give it a little extra tuck, and I've seen professional knitters and crocheters that make it look so easy. Um, I like to be secure. So all I'm doing to weave in the ends, again, this is a pretty forgiving project, is I am just catching yarn and weaving through. Now this does have stretch to it, and we know that it's gonna be stretched as people use it on the masks. So instead of just weaving in across one row, I'm actually gonna jog my yarn down a little bit. And this works well for me when I'm doing knit projects. Although I have to say, I love the forgiveness of crochet and I love the structure of it. I think it really does make, um, if you're going to learn one or the other, um, it makes it really nice to have something that works up so quickly. So I went down a couple rows. Again, I'm just catching yarn. I'm going back up a couple rows now, and then down one more time. And I have found for me with projects, this works the best so that if the item, the hat, the garment, the mask extender that you're crocheting or knitting, when you give it a tug, it's not gonna pop out at the end. So there's an example of a finished end, and I'm just gonna snip the yarn. And then the last part of the project, I'm gonna to switch to another one here, would be to attach your buttons. And again, this is something you're gonna to wanna to do a little test. Put your mask on, um, if you use a certain kind regularly or even a couple different, put it on and determine where you need it. Do a little stretch. But all I did to attach these buttons was just use some regular stowing thread and I used a tapestry needle that's metal. Um, again, whatever will work to fit through the buttonholes. Another little tip I like to give is because you're putting thin thread, if that's what you're using to attach the buttons instead of yarn, through um, yarn, which is rather forgiving, I like to start by coming up one part of a buttonhole and not pulling the thread or the yarn all the way through. I'll come back down and I actually catch that loop. And for me, I feel like that makes it a little bit more secure when you're sewing into something that, um, I don't know if holy is the correct word, but there's a lot of places for your needle and thread to escape. And then I'll just go through several times and I don't know how well the camera's picking this up, but I thought this was a really fun color combination. The bright fuchsia yarn with the little pop of teal on the clear button. And then at the end, you are going to come through, catch the yarn, make a knot with your needle to make sure your button's secured. And then snip all your thread and you've got a cute mask extender. And again, make it fun and personable, either to yourself or to the person. This is a little large, but I thought they'd be so pretty on the back. So whatever little embellishments you have, you can use. I hope to see you all on the Zoom Live. Thank you so much for joining us. We OPC, everybody stay safe and well.